What we're going to do here is we're going to uh, test several uh, spring action rifles and the first one of the ones that we're going to test is a Y-Rock HW97 blue laminate in 177 caliber. To do this, uh, we're going to use a special gun vise that has the ability to slide back and forth so that it can um, absorb the recoil or impact when the gun fires. So that there's no influence on the gun whatsoever, uh, there's a special solenoid sitting alongside the gun that Tr uh, triggers the trigger like so so that it's untouched by human hands. Before we begin uh, we want to make sure that the support that we're using here is perfectly level. We want to make sure that it's horizontal on both planes. As well as the gun. On the front of the uh, sliding gun vise, I've placed some tape and cut it with a razor blade so that we can see what the uh, recoil is after we shoot the gun. I've also placed some tape on the stock both at the top and at the front to see if we have any recoil when the gun fires. I have the solenoid hooked up to an electric switch, so when I push this button, the gun will fire, and that way you can see again that it's untouched by human hands. So let's begin by cocking the gun. The target that you see leaning up against the ladder in the background is about 10 meters away. And so what I'm going to do is run a series of uh, different pellets through the different guns and show you the results. I've just loaded a pellet in it uh, from the bottom side uh, because the gun's upside down. So we'll close the cocking rod and take our first shot. So it looks like the uh, recoil back turns out to be about a sixteenth of an inch it moved, moved back. And at the stock it doesn't look like it moved forward or back or it doesn't look like it moved up or down. Starting with the lightest pellet which is a RWS Hypermax uh, 5.2 grain pellet like this. For 10 meters, we got 1,005 1, feet per second average for six shots, 14 foot pounds of energy or 19 joules, and we had a circle of uh, 32 millimeters or an inch and a quarter. Moving up in weight to a JSB Match Diabolo Exact, which weighs 8.4 grains at 10 meters, it went uh, 815 feet per second average, developed 12 foot pounds of energy or 17 joules, and produced a small group at 3 millimeters 
or an eighth of an inch. Next we moved up in weight to a 10.5 grain pellet, um, a Crosman Premier Ultra Magnum and at 10 meters we got an average of 736 feet per second for six shots 13 foot-pounds of energy or 17 joules and the group started growing a little bit four millimeters or three sixteenths of an inch finally we moved up in weight to a 16 grain engine and at 10 meters we got 617 feet per second average for six shots 14 foot-pounds of energy or 18 joules and the groups grew again up to 13 millimeters or a half of an inch so then to summarize for the Y-Rock HW97K and 177 caliber starting with the lightest pellet and moving up 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 in weight we can see that the lightest pellets produced the largest groups then as we moved up we were able to hit the magic pellet here of uh, the JSB exact with an eighth of an inch group and then as we moved up heavier the 10.5 premier the group grew and the 16 grain engine the group grew again and the foot pounds are pretty close here there's quite a difference in speed but we're looking at energy <coughs> and joules and of course accuracy so all in all I would say that the JSB exact 8.4 grain for the HW97K would be the magic pellet Be sure to stay tuned for my next world's famous suspense-filled Dirty Harry thriller on spring action rifles starring the Y-Rock HW97K 22 caliber coming soon to a computer near you. In the meantime, stop by my website, topairgun.com, and make my day.